the disciples Jesus loved John was his name On the Isle of Patmos He was put away Rejected for the truth They couldn't stand the light But on the Isle of Patmos He had the time of his life The disciples and Paul The messenger was gone They had done what they came for So the Lord took them home But John had something more to do A letter he would write A letter to the churches A letter to the bride There is more for the bride There is more for you Heaven is open Let your hearts be open to Something is coming Coming in strange ways Be sure of what you hear You have never seen the stage The disciples and Paul The messenger was gone They had done what they came for So the Lord took them home But John had something more to do A letter he would write A letter to the churches A letter to the bride There is more for the bride There is more for you Heaven is open Let your hearts be open to Something is coming Coming in strange ways Be sure of what you hear You have never seen the stage There is more for the bride There is more for you Heaven is open Let your hearts be open to Something is coming Coming in strange ways Be sure of what you hear You have never seen the stays Be sure of what you hear You have never seen the stays Dear saints, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful this morning, dear God, that we can gather together in your divine presence, Lord. We thank you, dear God, that we have a great God like you, that we can worship and praise, Lord. I pray this morning, Lord, for the saints locally, dear God, as well as abroad, my Father. You see many of them, dear God, that stands in need this morning. I pray that you'll minister to them, Lord, some on the beds of affliction, my God, others in hospitals, my Father, and other places, Lord. I pray that you'll be with them, my God. Lord, I pray for your precious word that you will anoint it, my God. Uh, Lord, take our minds. Let something be said, Lord, uh, that shall be beneficial to your children living at this hour. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful once again to be in the house of God. We dealt with the message last week, my brothers and sisters, uh, reading uh, the writing on the wall. And uh, we're entitling our message this morning, Discerning the Times. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, throughout the scriptures, we see there are much admonition concerning uh, recognizing the time, discerning the time, interpreting the time, analyzing the time. And uh, brothers and sisters, this morning, we're not just talking about time in a general way. Because uh, 
as much as for us to get a background, it will take a long time. But brothers and sisters, we'll see from the scriptures this morning that we want to deal with uh, a specific period of time. Because Jesus Christ himself, he talked about uh, analyzing uh, the time uh, for your day. And my brothers and sisters, so when we entitle this message, uh, Discerning the Times, we're not talking about the general, general time in the world, but we are talking about uh, this specific time uh, that we are now living in. So we see in Luke chapter 12 and verses 54, Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, uh, in Luke chapter 12, he was identifying uh, time as it comes uh, into the time that you are living in. He said, let your lights be burning. And then he talked about, brothers and sisters, uh, how God uh, will feed his church uh, with fresh revelations uh, for this hour of time. As we can also see from that scripture in St. Luke chapter 12, we see the three watches. Brothers and sisters, and we know uh, that we are living uh, in this uh, final watch, the third watch. And so God is going to deal specifically with us at this hour of time. So as uh, the Lord begins to speak further in chapter 12, he gives a parable and then he talks to the multitude. And it says, and he said also to the people... When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. Now my brothers and sisters, look at Jesus Christ. He's talking to the multitude, and uh, he's saying, you know, when it comes to uh, the weather, the earth, the sky, and you see a certain sign, you are able to diagnose uh, what that weather condition is and you diagnose it so accurately because it says here, yeah, and so it is. In other words, it happens uh, exactly the way you diagnosed it. And uh, <clears throat> it goes further and he says, and when you see the south wind blow, ye say there will be heat and it cometh to pass. Now, Jesus Christ was getting to a point. Remember, there were religious Pharisees and Sadducees there. There was a multitude. He said when it comes to, I would say, uh, the weather patterns and uh, things on earth, it says you're so genuine about it. You're able to interpret it very well. But then uh, he says something that they probably didn't like. He said, you hypocrites, ye discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? See, he didn't say there the times, as we have as our title. He says, uh, how come you cannot discern this time? So this morning, my brothers and sisters, uh, we are looking at it from the point of Jesus Christ. The world, the church world, the religious world, you ask them any questions today, they got all the technology to answer you. But when it comes to time in relation, uh, or scriptural time in relation uh, to where we are living, somehow, brothers and sisters, they cannot really stand on the scripture and say, brother, this is what we believe, this is what we stand for. They're too scared because uh, of so many mistakes that have been made in the past. And my brothers and sisters, uh, they can say, well, Brother Branham said, uh, uh, you know, 77. Brother Jackson said 2004. And so, you know, we, we, we cannot state uh, exactly uh, how uh, and where we are. But brothers and sisters, God gave Daniel 70 weeks. It was a yardstick. In the book of Isaiah, he also spoke about two days. And my brothers and sisters, he gave many indicators so that we may be able to talk about this time, not just in a general way as such. 
We, we will be able to identify our time was in, in the past and run it in parallel to the time that we are living in. So Jesus Christ, he went straight to the point. He didn't want to make the people feel bad, but he called them hypocrites or pretenders or fools. He said that, brothers and sisters, uh, not because he did not have a point. He said, you can descend the face of the sky. When it comes to that, you're so accurate. And the earth. But how is it that you do not descend this time? So my brothers and sisters, it puts us on the spot as well. Because Jesus could be here today and he can pose the same question. My brothers and sisters, we got all the technology, we, we can, you know, have all the modern gadgets, but how come uh, we cannot relate to the scriptures? The religious world, the denominational world, um, they say, well, brothers and sisters, uh, we don't know, you can come today, you can come tomorrow, and, 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 and in that light. Brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to understand that God at certain uh, pivoted scriptures like in Malachi 4, 5, and 6, to show us that he will not take us by surprise. He sent a messenger at the first coming of Christ. He sent a messenger at the second coming of Christ. Brothers and sisters, uh, he has shown through the word of God uh, that we are not living in the first watch or the second watch. Uh, we are living in this third watch, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, where we can clearly identify uh, some things in the scripture. To to make us realize where we are living in time. No, we don't have to give people a day, a date, or a year, because by the time we progress to that year when Jesus is going to come, there is going to be so much of things on earth, brothers and sisters, that we will be guaranteed and will have a surety in our heart that our Christ uh, is going to come uh, in uh, a short while. So brothers and sisters, as we lay that as a background this morning, we see God spoke in Isaiah chapter 46 and verses 9. It said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. God specifically says that he is the God uh, that can declare the end from the beginning. In other words, what is going to be, it does, we don't have to wait till then for us to know what is going to transpire. That's the God that we serve. That's the spirit of truth that said uh, he will show us things to come. And my brothers and sisters declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, man can be able to set his agenda, his program. But in the finality, what God has put in the scriptures, that is going to come to pass. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we can see that God is very clear that he can declare the end from the beginning, and even if the world starts to say, well, look at what is planned, that doesn't mean it's going to happen according to how the world has said it, because God uh, can turn it around, uh, and His plan is what will really stand in the end. Even the Apostle Paul, brothers and sisters, uh, he was very clear in the book of Romans. He said, knowing the time." My brothers and sisters, uh, in other words, uh, we don't live and walk with a blank mind concerning the hour that we live in. This is specifically spoken about in the book of Daniel where it said uh, to Daniel, close up the book, seal the book until the time of the end. And he gave two pivoted indicators where he said uh, there will be swift transportation as well as knowledge shall increase. Daniel in his hour never knew what we know today. Brothers and sisters, uh, and so we can clearly say we are living uh, on the brink, brothers and sisters, uh, of our knowledge as uh, expanded uh, to you and I. So 
there are many other things that will let us know about uh, the time we live in. But Paul uh, was very specific and he himself had said that day shall not come except there be a falling away or there be a rebellion in the world and the man of sin revealed. So that is uh, two prominent scriptures that Paul wrote. But for us to be able to know how that way is being paved for the man of sin to be revealed, we will have to look at conditions uh, that are now on ground in the earth. And my brothers and sisters, um, if we do not have, I would say, uh, an ability through what is happening in the world to look at the conditions, then it is hard for you to know the time. It's hard for you to discern uh, where you are living in time. Just like when Jesus said, uh, he said you can talk about all of this, of the weather patterns and the earth, how come you cannot discern this time? What he was saying, you were following all through the scriptures and you are still looking for the Messiah and the Messiah is on earth and you did not discern it, you did not recognize it. So brothers and sisters, uh, the same way today, man uh, is looking at all that is happening in the world and they cannot discern or analyze or interpret how and where we are in time. So brothers and sisters, uh, when Paul said that, knowing the time, uh, he also laid down uh, some scriptures uh, that individuals will look at. But remember, Paul never had the book of Revelation. Paul, brothers and sisters, died uh, in the late 60s, uh, and the book of Revelation was only written in 96 A.D., and then too, the early church didn't have the understanding of it till God sent a messenger in this age that broke this, I would say, uh, unveiled what the meaning of the six seals are. And we are still waiting for the seventh seal to be open. So we are in a better position uh, to analyze, interpret, and should have a more sure ground of where we are living in time. So brothers and sisters, um, we see that God created this universe and there was a prehistoric age. And God judged that prehistoric age. And brothers and sisters, uh, through I would say seven days, uh, he brought this earth uh, into a position for man to be placed on earth. And Adam and Eve was placed on the earth. And for I would say 1,600 or 700 years, Mankind lived and the flood came on the scene. Brothers and sisters, uh, we can see uh, after the flood, it didn't take three or four hundred years. Man started to multiply. And my brothers and sisters, uh, mankind's nature does not change. And my brothers and sisters, <coughs> he decided to build a tower and a city. And in Genesis chapter 11 and verses 1, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Brothers and sisters, uh, we see that the pattern after the flood is actually demonstrated in the time that we're now living in. But we will try and relate how uh, it is happening in our day. Brothers and sisters, uh, they decided they have one speech, we speak the same language, we got unity, and so let's see what we can do. Brothers and sisters, they got together and they built a tower of Babel. Brothers and sisters, they built a mammoth city and they built a tower of Babel, but that was man's plan. God's plan, God told Noah when he came out of the ark, Multiply and replenish the earth. Brothers and sisters, uh, in other words, uh, multiply, replenish, spread over the entire earth. He didn't tell them, sit in one place, build one city, and build a tower. What was the tower for? Brothers and sisters, uh, 
the tower, no doubt, uh, they wanted to prove uh, there's uh, no more rain on top or there's no God over there. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, they built this tower. And uh, the Bible tells us further. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. And let us make a name. Brothers, that is what predominantly is in man. They want to make a name. Look at this in every sphere. Brothers, that's the nature of man. He cannot just silently do something uh, and just walk away. No, uh, he wants the applause. He wants the accolade. You watch it, brothers and sisters, on your Facebook and everywhere. Brothers and sisters, people put things what they want. They want that Facebook accolade. Same. Let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Brothers and sisters, uh, that nature do not change. That was their plan. But God, it was not God's plan. Brothers and sisters, uh, so we see right there are the very indicators of what is going to be happening down where we are living in this time. So brothers and sisters, uh, I would say in that second day or the second 2,000 years, around 1,650 years, brothers and sisters, the flood came and then the tower was built. Brothers and sisters, we're now living in the closing of the sixth day. Brothers and sisters, the same spirits have spread over the earth and uh, we want to see if we can parallel that to the day that we are now living in. Brothers and sisters, uh, we talked last week about AI and how it uh, dealt with Israel and how Israel is going to become, uh, brothers, like the Garden of Eden. So it doesn't have to wait, brothers and sisters, uh, thousands of years. We've shown you uh, some pictures of how it will no doubt, uh, progress to that point. Likewise, brothers and sisters, uh, we see that this week, the United Nations, brothers and sisters, uh, they had uh, a summit. It was a summit to demonstrate the effectiveness of AI. They had on show nine robots. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, they call them uh, humanoids. Brothers and sisters, uh, and they made them speak, and they spoke, and they said, if we are given a chance, we will be able to run the world in a better way with no rebellion. That was the words of the AI. Brothers and sisters, uh, so you can see uh, what has been put in their mind. But our point this morning is, brothers and sisters, Their title was AI for Good Global Summit. Now one would think in such an age, why have a title of such a low key? You know, normally in this age you've got the robots and you've got AI and everything. You're going to put a spectacular title. But brothers and sisters, uh, AI for Good Global Summit. This word, good, dear brothers and sisters, uh, is a key for us to understand how AI has been integrated uh, by the Vatican, the Pope, by brothers and sisters, uh, the United Nations, brothers and sisters, as well as uh, the World Council of Churches. Because if you put some great scientific word there, it's not, uh, religion can't get into it. Or only technology can get into it. Brothers and sisters, uh, so uh, this is a catch word. Because if you go and you can see what Pope Francis has been trying to do. And you see what the World Council of Churches has been uh, about to do. And you see what the United Nations uh, is doing with their agenda. You will see, brothers and sisters, they just put it in short. In other words... Uh, we want all of this for the good of humanity. Whether it comes through the Vatican, 
whether it comes through the United Nations uh, or whether the World Council of Churches, uh, it's all about good. But brothers and sisters, uh, they're going to use uh, artificial intelligence. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, AI did not start today. This is a rundown. Right in 1943, brothers and sisters, uh, the stepping stones, and we haven't got time to go through all this. But brothers and sisters, it shows us how it went. And, uh, you know, we know now the chat box and uh, chat GPT is on the scene. Well, this is up to 2015. So brothers and sisters, in the background, we see that the world has been uh, working. Remember, Satan has been inspiring man. Because we see, uh, even in the Tower of Babel, they did the same thing. Let's just build a tower and a city. But their intention was, we don't want to scatter. We want to stay in one place. And God came and confused them. And he said, this is not what I told Noah. I said, Noah, multiply and replenish the earth. Go abroad the earth. That's not my plan. Brothers and sisters, in a similar light, we see that God has got a plan for his people as well as the world. But the world has got another plan. Brothers and sisters, that is why you got Agenda 2030. You had an agenda by the United Nations uh, 2023. Brothers and sisters, uh, you see it's all seven years, all seven years, all seven years. Let us know, brothers, by the time the Pope is ready to sign the covenant, there is going to be a covenant for another seven years. Brothers, uh, you, you can see that in 2015, they said uh, seven years, brothers and sisters, and they brought it to 2023. And in 2023, they got 2030 is when they had the next summit. So that lets us know time-wise, brothers and sisters, when the covenant is about to be signed, he's going he's, he's gonna to love another seven years. Brothers and sisters, uh, because uh, that is what the framework they've been working with. So AI has been in the making, uh, brothers and sisters, right from the 40s and the 50s. But look at where it's come to now. Brothers and sisters, this is uh, the, uh, the robot. She's, brothers and sisters, talking to the people. They're in the summit. And, and one of these robots had said, if, given, if we are given a chance, we will be able to better run the world with no rebellion. In other words, we will just inform you all, all what you're going to do because... The agenda has already been put inside them. The World Council of Churches agenda, the, World Count, uh, the United Nations agenda, as well as the Pope's agenda. Brothers and sisters, if you remember, when we were going through COVID, we touched upon this. Brothers and sisters, from China's point of view, and how the Pope had his agenda, how he was running it parallel with the United Nations, we know that the United Nations feel we can control the world. If there wasn't a thing as the nation of Israel, brothers and sisters, they will run through. But we know their agenda is going to be short-lived. But whatever time it is short-lived, uh, that is why the Pope will have had enough time to be able to take over from there and run his agenda. Brothers and sisters, so we see... This is what has happened this week. This is uh, the United Nations agenda. They have 17 goals. Brothers and sisters, uh, one of it is to get rid of poverty. The other is, brothers and sisters, uh, they don't want uh, inequalities. And my brothers and sisters, uh, they want climate change. Those are the three main goals. Brothers and sisters, uh, climate change, no inequalities, and my brothers and sisters, uh, they want to get rid of poverty. Simply, brothers and sisters, that is what the world has been running to. Listen to the news, listen to anything. 
brothers and sisters, uh, it's about poverty, it's about climate change, it's about inequality. All the houses burning, all the cities burning, everything taking place what it is, it's about inequality. It's been already generated because the United Nations uh, has got that agenda and it's been, uh, brothers, uh, now put into those robots. That's why AI for good. See that word good? Brothers and sisters, this is what we've got 17 goals uh, to change this world. The Pope has got the same idea. You l listen to him talking, uh, brothers, when he signs that covenant finally. It's a treaty for the economies of the world to prosper. That's why the Bible says the crafts will prosper. Why? AI will show it to the world that we can do it in a faster space of time. Remember this? When they went to uh, Abu Dhabi and they signed this human fraternity meeting, it is to make one family of the world. Brothers and sisters, that everybody can have uh, equal things in the world. There won't be one rich and one poor. And that's the Pope's ideology. Now my brothers and sisters, bringing it to our day, this time, 2023, August 1st to 6th, he is going to Portugal, to Lisbon, Brothers and sisters, uh, and he is going to be able to set his agenda. And if you read his agenda, his agenda is the same agenda of the United Nations. Brothers and sisters, and the same thing that the World Council of Churches is propagating. Brothers, no poverty, no inequality, and we must take care of the earth. Very simple. Brothers and sisters, uh, anybody can preach that from every kind of an angle. And my brothers and sisters, so you can see uh, how he has been moving this forward. And my brothers and sisters, we know he's, uh, he's, he's up in age. He may not be the one to be the, the man of sin. But brothers and sisters, he has set the agenda. Brothers and sisters, for that. And that is why I have to say, brothers and sisters, uh, if we didn't have the scriptures, then uh, brothers, uh, they will set it all for whatever they want. But we know that Israel is going to put a blockade to that because the Bible says uh, that he will cut the nations to pieces that comes against Israel. Brothers and sisters, uh, the United Nations uh, General Secretary, they have said the... Uh, the war that, or the, the, the skirmish that they had in Jenin, that Israel shouldn't have went in there and uh, taken out these terrorists. They said that Israel has caused more problems. Brothers and sisters, and he is the head of the United Nations. That is why God is going to deal a blow to that United Nations, but he will use it to a certain point because it's paving the way for the man of sin to have his technology, for him to have, brothers and sisters, uh, the world's attention at his feet. So we can see, understanding this time, brothers and sisters, that is July, August. That's two months down the, uh, the, the road. He's going to go there to Portugal. Why is he going to Portugal? That is where the three, you remember, Small shepherd girls had a vision from Mother Mary. And my brothers and sisters, they call it the vision of Fatima. That this Mother Mary gave the little shepherd girls information of running time till the end. And my brothers and sisters, so the Pope is going back to visit that place. And he is going to, brothers and sisters, spread this ideology. That shows us, brothers and sisters, how everything is working in lockstep as we move forward. Well, <laughs> this is one of the other uh, robots. She had a message. As I said again, they all spoke with a unified voice. Imagine, brothers and sisters, uh, this is what is going to be on the world, talking to the world. Uh, if the Pope gets tired talking, they're going to talk. 
They're going to say, brothers, how to get rid of poverty, how to treat everybody uh, the same uh, and take care of the earth. Because it's all generated in them. And they've got a very wise way of talking, a smooth way to bring it about in a fast way. Well, that was a summit that took place. But brothers and sisters, in 1933, Brother Branham had a seven visions. The fourth vision was he saw a modern car on the road, an X-shaped car, brothers and sisters that was driverless. And people were playing some type of a game in the back seats. And the car was moving. I mean, that was 1933, brothers and sisters. So he didn't have, I would say, the scientific words that we have today, the AI terminologies and everything. But brothers and sisters, it was to show that God showed time to our day of what is going to be technology on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, so we can see God gave that as an indicator to us. Brothers and sisters, every nation is trying to bring that driverless car on the, on the scene. They're working on it, brothers and sisters, in Germany, in China, in California, everywhere. And all is integrated with AI, Facebook, Microsoft. Brothers, all these things are all working together. That lets us know, brothers and sisters, God wanted to alert us that we should recognize where we are living in. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the modern driverless cars. And I don't say that's the one that Brother Branham saw. But brothers and sisters, inside, you can see the seats. They're probably watching TV or playing games or watching video. Those things are on the scene at this moment of time. That's another one that was there at the summit. Brothers and sisters, I don't know, she had a full question and answer. She could answer all your questions. AI die, day. Brothers and sisters, uh, that is another one that was there. Brothers and sisters, they were all giving their speeches, telling the world, give it to us, we will run the world in a better way. And my brothers and sisters, uh, our point this morning is, when the Pope takes over this world, he is going to have the best technology to run the world. You can't run away because they will all catch you, brothers. They've got systems to know exactly face recognition. They can, even from the back, they can know who you are. The way you walk and the way you talk. And so, brothers and sisters, God saw that down in time. Now, brothers and sisters, why was all of that important? Because we see in Revelation 13, 16, God spoke to John and he told him, it says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, so every category, free and bond. Isn't that the message, brothers and sisters? Uh, no inequality. Uh, everybody must be equal. Rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. Brothers and sisters, uh, you know, a few years ago, we preached the same scriptures, I say many years ago, talking about the barcode, uh, talking about your credit card, talking about uh, all of that. Then, brothers and sisters, we moved uh, to other things like your cell phones. And now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that. They've moved a step further. And, uh, you know, even now when we go with our card, they say tap. <laughs> Sometimes if you're not used, uh, plus, uh, it's got tap. You just tap uh, on that uh, machine and it goes through. But that's still outdated to what they are moving on to now. If you remember a few weeks ago, a month, we talked about this test of the CBDC, brothers and sisters, the central bank digital uh, dollar, brothers and sisters currency. 
So we see, brothers and sisters, uh, they were thinking if they make this digital dollar, we've got to test it. This past two months, brothers and sisters, the United States of America has been in a test. And this week, they said that it has passed its test, that if they make a digital dollar, you'll be able to transact over lands and states and countries in a faster way with lesser mistakes. So that lets us know they got the green light to make a digital dollar. Why? Because the Bible already said we are, will be moving into a cashless society. Brothers and sisters, AI together with man are going to touch their touching now. Brothers and sisters, sir, they're being integrated. That no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, this doesn't mean uh, that the mark of, of the beast is now on the earth. This is the technology that will bring that on uh, in the middle of the week when the Pope signs the covenant. But brothers and sisters, uh, the Pope is not going to wait because it takes long. I showed you from that picture of AI how long it took to come to this point. Brothers and sisters, it says no man, no matter what you do, the technology is going to be so shockproofed, you can't make any change. Whatever monies you got in the banks, in the attic, brothers and sisters, uh, no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark. That will be a chip placed in you, brothers and sisters, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. In other words, the European technology will work via the beast system. Brothers and sisters, at that time, so we know, brothers and sisters, there is a number on play. The Pope's title, instead of the Son of God, if it's translated into numerical language, it adds up, brothers and sisters, to 666, Vicaria Philae Dei. Brothers and sisters, that's the Latin numericals. If you add them up, that was something that was shown to the Bride of Christ a long time ago. But the technology is now coming on the scene. And brothers and sisters, we see that that is our, the system that the beast will use. So brothers and sisters, this will be the digital dollar currency that has now got the go-ahead, the pass. Brothers and sisters, uh, AI will put into effect. You will say, how will they do that? Look at how fast things are changing. Brothers and sisters, we had internet, we had uh, the Facebook, and then you had Twitter. Now, Twitter had a problem, brothers and sisters, uh, with the f Facebook. They made their own uh, brothers and sisters system. Now, they call it uh, threads. So you got threads and you got Twitter. Brothers and sisters, uh, hall to text and, and do all kinds of things. They are all being integrated for this system. Brothers and sisters, that you will be able to use uh, that system to do buying, selling, whatever it is. So brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that the digital dollar will come on the scene, brothers and sisters, uh, because it's got the green light. But we know that America, brothers and sisters, is going to lose its status because God's going to clear America. Brothers and sisters, have a, I would say, a spring cleaning so that the Jews can come to America. That's a final role. And my brothers and sisters, so uh, the technology has to get to that point. Because, brothers and sisters, we are heading for a cashless society. Even today, most banks, if you go, they don't want to give you large amounts of cash. They don't want to, brothers and sisters, deal. I'm sure Jodash will agree with that in some of these places, you know. They'll send you to the ATM, you know, and do these kind of things. Because they're trying to, I would say, guide people, brothers and sisters, to a cashless way of uh, transacting 
all your transactions. God spoke about this in the book of Revelation a long time ago, that man will go towards a cashless society. But brothers and sisters, beyond the digital dollar, the final currency that's going to come on the scene, because the earth in the scripture is related to the earth, the prophetic earth, that is Europe and the North African and Middle East countries. Brothers and sisters, we have to look at it that the European digital dollar is going to be the currency that the beast is going to use. The digital, uh, I mean, the digital euro, sorry. Not the digital dollar. The digital dollar is going to go down. The euro is going to come up. And my brothers and sisters, the European nations will... Now, they said Europe has been also doing a test for its Euro, I would say, currency. Brothers and sisters, uh, they are working on it, and in a short while, it will also pass its European test, and you're going to get a, a European digital currency that will be on the scene. That is what it's going to be, because... That is what the Pope is going to say. If you're going to use our currency, you cannot ever use it without a mark of the beast system. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it will be a digital system. There will not be cash. Brothers and sisters, it will be all transacted by artificial intelligence. And so, brothers and sisters, the word of God says, Yea, is wisdom. Let him that understand, let him that had understanding count the number of the beast. So, God said to people in this hour, this time, if you have wisdom, count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. See how clear God was? It is the number of a man. Not technology, but the number of a man, a specific man, uh, which is the Antichrist. Uh, and the title that the Antichrist wears, uh, brothers and sisters, is instead of the Son of God, uh, Ficarius Fili Dei. Count! The number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his, num and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Brothers, how much more clear could God have been that society was God wisdom if they count the Latin numericals of that word instead of the Son of God, they would have come to this total six, six, six. And my brothers, once that euro digital currency is made, brothers, some way in that AI's brain is going to be worked a numerology that will work with these numerals. Brothers and sisters, uh, remember, Satan himself will somehow want to put this title in its system. The world doesn't know about it, or maybe certain churches may know about it. But to the children of God, they have been able to link all the scriptures. Because the Bible said, count the numerals of a man. It's a numerals of a man. Which man are you going to count? The world will count the greatest leader. But they don't know, brothers, how the Pope is going to continue from where the Popes of the Dark Ages left. So, brothers and sisters... We will have to say, brothers and sisters, man has traveled to this point. And my brothers and sisters, if man was left with his own agenda, I would have to say, brothers and sisters, the devil would add all of us in this world to destruction, which is finally going to lead to. But we thank God that God has related in his word Brothers and sisters, that when this currencies and when all of this comes to its climax, brothers and sisters, there is going to be a war in the Middle East, an era of the miraculous, 
Israel is going to stop the United Nations from going any further with an agenda. Brothers and sisters, all that they brought to this point is going to come to a stop. And the man that is going to take over from there, brothers and sisters, uh, when uh, I would say Ezekiel 38 and 39 battle is fought, is the Antichrist. The system will already be there. He will have all his AI agents and he will have the technology. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he will take off from there because the world will be in such confusion. And that is why he'll be able to sign a covenant. What a covenant he's going to sign with the many nations on the world. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible says, and he will cause craft to prosper. For the first three and a half years of that time, it is going to prosper because... United Nations has brought it to that point. AI has brought it to the point. And now the beast system is there. He's got all these ten nations of Europe on his side. He's got the World Council of Churches on his side. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that is why there's a peace for three and a half years, 1,260 days. But God will be dealing with the 144,000 and the Jews. And in the middle of the week, the devil is going to incarnate this man of sin and say, you know what? You got all the technology, you got all the AI, you got all the robots. Now, the final thing is to go and sit in the temple of God, New Jerusalem, and be looked upon as God. Brothers, he got all the technology, he got all this thing at his, at, his, at his side. Nobody can make a move. Nobody can do anything. Brothers and sisters, they press a button. And wherever you can be, it will just plot you on. And we know this is the prophetic earth, brothers and sisters, we're talking about. And we realize, brothers and sisters, he will run its course. That is why the tribulation period is going to be one of the most turbulent periods brothers and sisters, for people that are religious, because he'll be anti-God. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and as that tribulation comes to a close, brothers and sisters, we'll be in heaven. The rapture would have taken place. We'll be getting ready to come down with Jesus Christ. And when he comes down, the Bible says, and I saw the beast. This is after the battle of Armageddon is fought and the kings of the earth and their armies are gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. They still have all the AI and they'll be questioning them, what should we do? And AI will tell them, well, make war. Brothers and sisters, they don't know, AI don't know of the power of Jesus Christ. AI has no idea of what one word from the lips of Jesus can do. And that is why, brothers and sisters, that Pope is going to be there with the armies together. And they're going to say, well, you know, zero your missiles, zero. nothing is happening. Jesus is still descending. The bride is still descending. Says, make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. We will be part in there. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is not f fearing what technology can bring. Remember, the technology is good. It's a tool that can be used for good. But if it's got in the wrong hands, it can be used for the worst thing. Jesus Christ doesn't need electronics. He's been a given authority by his Father to take over this world, coming with his bride. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, and the beast was taken, that's the beast spirit, and with him the false prophet, that is the Antichrist, that works miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast into the lake of fire with brimstones. In other words, the Pope, his spirit will be put into the lake of fire together with this 
be spirit brothers and sisters that will bring europe up brothers and sisters together i wonder what is going to happen to all ai then how they going to run down with battery power and switch off brothers and sisters but we are so thankful that god has given a picture of progression that we can know that time that we now living in and it will be fallacy for any man or woman that is living on the face of this earth can, cannot see how time has progressed and where we are in time and my brothers and sisters all of these things had to be because it's paving the way for Paul's uh, indicator then shall the man of sin be revealed brothers and sisters uh, because uh, there has to be brothers and sisters uh, i would say uh, a world council of churches there had to be a united nations with its agenda 20 there had to be ai technology how else is revelation chapter 13 uh, to be fulfilled no man can buy or sell and a cashless society come on the scene so brothers and sisters all of this has been paving the way for the bride of jesus christ to have a sure foundation we are living in a late hour of time brothers and sisters to understand that while the world comes against israel and come against the bride and think while well, brothers and sisters uh, you know god has not given the bride further light in this end time brothers and sisters is for us to see the beautiful picture and at the same time brothers and sisters not to be afraid of all this that is coming on there because remember brothers and sisters it is working towards paving the way for this man of sin to finish his agenda faster that is why i have to say brothers when this pope will be leaving to lisbon in august he's got an agenda god knew about it a long time ago and my brothers and sisters god knows all that is in this robots he knows actually what is in the world council of churches they are all working together for a common agenda to be able to bring their world peace on the scene but god has got a better plan for the children of god his son jesus christ who paid the price on calvary is coming back to earth to take over this world and to bring peace and tranquility for them that would believe we thank the lord this morning brothers and sisters uh, let's just bow for a word of prayer heavenly father we are thankful to live at this hour of time lord we see the many changes in this world and lord we see the scriptures that have spoken about the purpose of all of these changes we see lord how it's paving the way for this antichrist man to come on the scene lord as well as lord for the bride of christ to lift up her head for her redemption is drawing close i pray lord that you will bless all thy people scattered across the world lord i pray that you will bless them touch them meet all of their needs lord if some is suffering in body lord touch them and raise them from the beds of affliction my god lord you've been faithful to us lord in these hours of time and we give you all the thanks and praise and we ask these mercies in the name of jesus christ amen and amen may the lord bless you this morning brothers and sisters
Come so easy.